Well, well, back on the so so back to so you mentioned apostolic succession as as something initially it seemed oh this is you know one of the this is a positive, um, and as you get into this uh, this church group, you're starting to see some more of the negatives uh, um, with, yeah. with some of these different things. Um, somewhere along the line, I'm guessing apostolic succession was not as important anymore. Which I know this that is a really big deal to a lot of these different church yeah, groups, it right? Is. It is somewhere along the line is like, oh, actually, maybe this isn't as important. What changed your mind? What okay, changed it, there? It wasn't that it wasn't as important. It was that it's not what the early Christians teach. That's what. Yeah. See, hmm. you see, the interesting thing is when I originally read the early Christians on my own. I was not convinced of apostolic succession in the way that it is taught. Of course, I didn't know what it mean. I'd, I'd heard the expression apostolic succession, and then I see they talk about the succession of, of bishops and all of that, and I thought, oh, well, this is maybe what it's meant. But no, then we, when we got around the Anglicans and the Orthodox and all that, what they mean by apostolic succession is, yeah, you aren't validly ordained unless, yeah, you've been ordained by someone who was ordained by someone who, who you can trace yourself all the way back to one of the apostles who ordained. And so you've got this kind of line that this, you know, chain of apostolic succession is passed through on the ordination, okay? And so you're not really validly ordained. And so therefore it's not, I don't know, the Anglicans would not say this, but the Orthodox, it's not a valid communion, you know? Oh, uh, that okay. you're having in your church if mm -hmm. the minister who is presiding, you know, is does not ha was not ordained through apostolic succession. But what the early church, but what they're talking about is who ordained whom. I realized it was when I was working on the dictionary. Okay, so I'm I'm starting over afresh. I go to the Anti Nicene Fathers. I start in chronological order from the beginning. Okay, okay, and and I'm just writing these quotes on a jillion subjects, you, you know, uh, anything I thought was important. And, you know, since I was Anglican, I was trying to be very neutral on both from the Catholic side, small C Catholic, and the Protestant side. I, I was, you know, just w w what do they say? And I was thinking of topics that were of interest to Catholic, Orthodox, Anglican, topics that were interested mm -hmm. of interest to Anabaptists, to Baptists, wh whatever, you know, just... Um, uh, just things that would be of interest. So uh, I had, you know, one of them was apostolic succession. So I'm looking at the quotes and I'm realizing, okay, they're not talking about who ordained whom. When they, their list of uh, succession is a list of who followed whom in office, not who ordained whom. So like hmm. um, normally a person stayed in office till they died. So they okay. didn't ordain their successor. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with the laying on of mm. hands by someone who's been, you know, someone got zapped by the apostles and then they can zap the next person, that kind of thing. <laughs> They're not talking about sure. that at all. And the only reason they even bring it up at all is because the Gnostics, um, they were, they, they had, you know, these weird, strange doctrines. Uh, I mean, so strange that you can hardly call them Christian. I mean, it, it's... Like the God of the Old Testament is not the same God as the God of the New Testament, and they rejected most of the books of the New Testament and, and stuff like that. But anyway, Jesus never came in the flesh. For you know, anyway, their teachers were saying, "Oh well, yeah, I was a companion of Paul, and and you know, uh, we yeah we got this from the apostles." And so Irenaeus's response was, "Well, our churches we can show the succession of the bishops that we can trace ourselves to the." apostles, he's talking about the doctrine, you know, that yeah. this person got his doctrine from the apostles, and and then this one got it from that guy and, and, and all of that. Um, yeah, where's your list? Where did you, you came from nowhere. You, you know, you just popped up and you come up with this doctrine. We can trace ourselves back to the apostles. But he's not talking about ordination that, yeah, this made your ordination valid or invalid. It was that yeah, you're carrying on the historical faith. It's being handed down from the apostles. And it's a good argument. I mean, Irenaeus wrote about 170, 180, somewhere in there. It's a very good argument just 70 years after the apostle John died. Now, it breaks down when you get, you know, three, four hundred, a thousand, fifteen hundred years. Well, yeah, you're not necessarily still carrying it on. In fact, you can yeah. show very positively you're not teaching what they taught back back then. So I saw that when I worked on the Dictionary of Early Christian Beliefs, that, okay, 
Yeah, this teaching that the Catholic Church, the Orthodox, the Anglicans, that they have on apostolic succession, it's just, it's not what the early Christians are saying. It's, yeah, that, that's totally false. It's invalid. And so, yeah, so from that point, yeah, it didn't, it, it was of no um, particular importance to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, not everyone in our church, I had not tried to necessarily convince them. Some of them still felt fairly strong about it, and and so... I I did not want to split the church over. You know, we had a nice a nice group there. I mean, eventually, I guess I did make an issue of it, and and, and it did kind of create a uh, a stir in the in in the church. And then th- at that point is when we broke up because it's like, okay, if if apostolic succession isn't important, which it's it's not, and it's it's not even valid. I mean, I realized looking at my scroll, it's like. <laughs> This is fake. I mean, it's purporting to say who ordained whom. Well, we don't even have a record. Their record is who followed whom in office. There's no record of who did the ordaining. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So, and and there's hmm. big gaps in the historical record that they've filled, and they've they've. I just realized this isn't even hmm. valid. That, you know, that's so ironic though that you're kind of coming to to terms with this while while an Anglican priest and while you're actually writing the one book that identifies you as such. Yeah. And and in that process of re re going through the early church fathers, you know, and Nicene fathers is actually when you started reevaluating this and saying, wait, I'm actually reading this wrong. Or like, I, I, yeah. I got this wrong. Yeah. That's fascinating to me. 